Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we are going to continue Chapter 3, Reaction Kinetics. I am your Madam Ruby, logging in for Lesson 52, Integrated Rate Loss. At the end of the topic, students should be able to write the integrated rate equation for zero order, first order, and second order reaction. Where does integrated rate laws come from? How do we get them? The first one is zero order reaction. Let's look at how we derive the integrated law equation for zero order reaction. And while watching and listening to this lecture, you should be able to fill in page 82 and 83 of the course book in front of you. Say we have a reaction, reactant A becoming product. The rate law is rate equals to K concentration of A to the power of 0. 0 means it has zero or direction. So the exponential for A is zero. So rate is equals to K. Uh, because the rate is not depending on the concentration of A at all. And in previous lesson, we have calculated and find out that the unit of K is equals to the unit of rate which is mol per liter per second or molar per second. Okay, by now you should have filled in the first two rows of the first column in your page 82. Let's look at how the integrated rate law comes from for a zero order reaction. A zero order reaction means that the exponent on the concentration of A is zero. Means that the rate does not depend on the concentration at all. It's a constant rate and that amount that is constant is K. In order to figure out the integrated rate law, the concentration change with time we need to do a little bit of integration. So, the rate is usually described as the decrease in the concentration of reactant A over time equals to K. So, we're just going to replace the rate up here with the differential rate equation and then we are going to separate into two uh, differential. One is a decrease in the concentration of A. And another one would be um, DT. DT here is referring to delta T or the difference in time. So we do integration on the left side and on the right side the integration is from a t to a zero or the initial concentration of a so it will become like this and then the integration towards dt would be t right and we would get this final formula okay Make an amendment, adjustment a little bit. We're going to get uh, A, T, S, Y, and then negative K, T. Here we have a negative slope, S, M, and then the concentration initial of A would be the Y intercept. Uh, or we can also put all the A's as a subject. So the initial concentration of A minus concentration of A at T time is equals to KT. Now this is going to give us a positive slope. Okay, let's fill in the fourth row of that column by filling in the formula 
for calculating half-life for zero-order reactions. How do we get this formula? So firstly, we write down the integrated rate law that we have derived previously in the last slide. And then we substitute T equals to half-life. And A, concentration of A equals to initial concentration over 2. So we got this one is A0 minus A0 over 2 equals to K half-life. Now A0 minus A0 over 2 would be A0 over 2, right? Uh, equals to K half-life. So we put half-life as a subject and we are going to get concentration of initial for A divided by 2K. That's how you derive this formula. Half-life for zero order reaction is directly proportional to the initial concentration of the reactant. Next, on the last row of page 82, you need to draw this graph of rate versus concentration of A for zero order reaction. And you can see here, when you plot rate at the y-axis and concentration of A on the x-axis, you're going to get rate is equals to K, a constant whereby the unit for K is molar per second. Uh, please write this down in that page 82. Moving on to page 83, you would have to draw graph 1 and graph 2 for zero order reaction. So this is the first graph whereby you are going to plot the concentration of A on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Here, you are going to get M equals to negative K. It's a negative slope. And the y-intercept would be the initial concentration of A. For graph 2, you are going to plot the initial concentration of A minus concentration of A on the y-axis. So you are going to get a positive straight line slope that origins from the uh, zero um, number and the formula or the line agrees with y equals to mx, where m is equals to the rate constant. The last graph that you're going to draw on that page 83 is the comparison of the first and the second half life for zero or direction, first column. So you're going to plot the concentration of A against time T. And when you are plotting A, you notice that A0 is somewhere up here. And then when you divide A0 into 2, you're going to get the half-life over here at time T. And between 0 and t, it is 2x. The length of it is 2x. And when you get the second half-life, which is a quarter of a naught, you're going to get another t, whereby this t is half of the first t. So you're going to get 2x and x on the x-axis. This is a description of a graph for zero or direction. When you plot concentration of A versus T, you're going to get the first half-life and the second half-life separated by 2x and x. Now, let's look at the second one. First, order reaction. In page 82, for the second row, you can fill in 
this rate law for the first order reaction. Rate equals to K concentration of A to the power of 1. And the unit for K here is molar per second over molar. We cross out the molar and the unit is now per second. Okay, now let's do an integration for the first order reaction. First, we write down rate equals to K concentration of A exponent 1. Uh, rewrite the rate by writing the disappearance of A over dt equals to K concentration of A and you put this A on the left and you take the dt up on the right and now we are ready for integration. So this is a bit of calculus if you can um, bear with me and also you should be able to understand since you are learning maths too. So um, what is the integration from A to A node of 1 over A? Uh, because the A would be on the slightly right here. So it will be left with 1 over A. Yes, 1 over concentration of A. The integration would be ln A. So from ln A t time t to ln A naught. Okay, it would be like this. Okay, and uh, we put the negative here. This one. And we integrate dt. That would be kt. Lah. Right. So now we are going to have a different form of formula. Because it is already integrated. Now ln a would become the y. Equals to negative kt. Therefore, m is the negative k. It would have a negative slope if we plot it. And also, ln a naught would be the y-intercept. Or, the second integrated law equation, we pull ln a naught together as a subject here on the left. And we get kt, where k is the positive slope, m. Okay. The next part is to look at the half-life for first order reaction. What is the integrated law equation just now? Ln A equals to negative KT plus ln A naught. Substituting T as half-life here and A as A naught over 2. Let's put it here. It becomes ln A0 over 2 minus equals to minus K half-life plus ln A0. Okay, we simplify this and we are going to get half-life equals to ln 2 over K. Half-life for the first order reaction is not depending on the initial concentration of the reactant. You have actually learned this previously last year when you were calculating the half-life for radioactive isotope. Ah, this is following first order half-life. For the first graph that you're going to draw in page 83 in the middle column is the graph of rate versus the concentration of A, where you're going to get a straight line coming through from the uh, origin. And here, uh, please write the uh, slope M is equals to K, whereby K has a unit of per second and you can also write rate equals to k concentration of a to the power of one basic stuff next you're going to draw two graphs graph one is the um, 
plotting of lone concentration A versus T. Okay, here you're going to have ln A0 as the y-intercept. And since this is the formula that we integrate just now, the slope is negative k. So here we're going to have m equals to negative k, a negative slope. And then um, we're going to um, draw this um, graph. Uh, there in your page 83. The second graph is when we want to plot ln A0 over A on the y-axis versus um, T. So we're going to get a positive slope here, slope uh, of um, M equals to K and it is coming through from the origin as well whereby we're going to write um, the integrated, the second integrated log equation for the first order in the form of y equals to mx. Well, the last graph for the first order direction here is the most important, whereby we're going to plot the concentration of reactant A against time. So here we're going to uh, put A0 at the y-intercept. And then the half of A0 would be the half-life at time t here. Okay, we're going to get it if using the formula, it's ln 2 over k. But if using a graph, you can always look at the um, scale where we plot the data. You can see here, the first half-life has time t equals to x and then the second half life when a0 is divided by 4 it is also time t is equals to x so the difference between the first half life and the second half life is x the same value that is how we detect the first order reaction for the graph of concentration of rectum against time. Next, we would like to look at second order direction. It will be the last one for our syllabus today. Now, let's fill in your first two row of the third column by filling in the particulars for second order direction. A, when it becomes product, the red law is red equals to k concentration of a to the power of 2. The exponent for a is 2. And on the second row, the unit for k is equals to molar per second over molar square. So you remove 1m each on top and on the bottom. And you're going to get per molar per square. This is the unit for K of second order reaction. How do we get integrated law equation for um, second order? So firstly, we write down the rate law. Rate equals to K concentration of A to the power of 2. And then rate, we um, write a differential um, rate equation where it shows here it's the disappearance of A. And then um, we um, restructure a bit where dt we put on the right and then A to the power of 2 we put down here under D concentration of A. Uh, you know here that A is the concentration of A, right? And uh, time t is represented by t. Na? Okay, so now let's integrate both part. This part, the left side and the right side. So when we do this, okay, we know that A0 is the initial concentration of A at time equals to 0. So the integral would be for... 
uh, 1 over a to the power of 2 for a until a naught uh, from time t to o okay to zero and the integral for the right side is for dt and we're going to get t negative k is a constant follow through so we are going to get um, the integral from time t until zero also next uh, this is the formula that we are going to get um, uh, um, from the integration of the uh, differential rate equation of a just now it looks a bit messy it's not pretty so let's just uh, remove a lot of negative sign here uh, let's put uh, positive here plus 1 over a naught and then uh, kt here is negative we put it here it becomes uh, kt plus 1 over a naught and then uh, this one we put over here becomes 1 over a uh, so okay this is even more handsome because a over a uh, 1 over a sorry is uh, as a y equals to kt k is the uh, slope a positive slope um, and uh, 1 over a naught would be the y intercept or we can also uh, put uh, 1 over a naught together on the left side here it becomes subject y and equals to kt or mx. Uh, so this is how we integrate the um, integration for um, rate law of uh, second order. Uh, this is the first one, the first uh, equation and this is the uh, second equation. You can put this in your I think fourth row of the third column in page 82. What is the formula for half-life of a second order ration? Uh, here they are. So how do we derive it? First, write down the second order reaction of the integrated law and then we substitute T as half-life and A as A0 over 2. So we are going to get 1 over a naught over 2 equals to k half life plus 1 over a naught. Okay, so we touch up the formula derived so that it becomes as handsome as possible. Uh, these are the formula half life equals to 1 over k times the concentration of a naught. Uh, initial concentration basically so based on the equation that we have just now we know that half-life for second order reaction is inversely proportional to the initial concentration of the reactant for that one uh, one box of your pitch 83 is two graph of rate versus a one is going up like this in a curve but when you um, square root the concentration of a you're going to get a straight line from the origin the first graph of second order direction is the plot of one over concentration of a on the y-axis versus time t on the x-axis so you can see that the y-intercept has uh, this 1 over concentration of a naught the initial concentration and the slope is a positive uh, one and you can see here the y equals to mx plus c is uh, fitting into the first integrated law equation for second order. 
For the second graph, we put 1 over A0 to the left side here so that we can plot it on the y-axis and it become y. So the slope would be coming from the origin 0 with um, the plot of time on the x-axis. And finally, this is the most important graph whereby when we plot the concentration of A against time, we're going to have A0 on the y-intercept and it's going to become this curve. And then find um, half-life, first half-life at half of A0, we're going to get this T. This T is actually X. And then we find the second half-life, which is a quarter of the initial temperature. That would be 2X. So the, the difference between the first half-life and the second half-life is, is two times is two times greater, uh, 2x with x. So using this um, graph, we would be able to detect whether this particular reaction is a second order. Okay, This is a formula of half-life, 1 over k times concentration of initial A. Oh, that's it. Um, we finish lesson 52 now. Um, I hope you will be able to complete uh, page 82 and 83 before we move on to the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.